Welcome to this tutorial where we will talk you through step by step on how to install and run our example notebooks for JupyterLab in ArenaView. The first step is to download the latest Arena SDK version from our downloads hub page, then download our example notebook files which are found in our JupyterLab resource center page. After installing Arena SDK, unzip and copy the example files to C Drive, Program Data, Lucid Vision Labs, Arena View, Arena JP, Jupyter source code examples. Of course, if you've chosen a different path during the Arena SDK installation, please save your example files to that particular path. The example notebook files will be a zip file containing the notebook and various other supporting files. In this example with the object detection notebook, it will include the IPYNB file, a CSV file for object labels, and a sample image for those who wanna test this notebook out without having an active camera. Next, let's launch ArenaView. In this example, we have a Triton 7.1 megapixel camera attached to the PC. We'll check that it's detected in ArenaView, but we won't toggle on the connection. This is important when you wanna run Jupyter Notebooks. Don't enable the connection between ArenaView and the camera, just make sure it's detected and shows up here. To launch Jupyter Lab, go to the Options tab. Here we can select the virtual environment, by default, ArenaView ships with its own Python installation. If you have your own installation, you can toggle this switch and point to your specific folder. For now, we'll just use the default setting. Okay, to launch the JupyterLab server, click here to toggle it on. We've already previously launched the server, so we already have a password to find, which we'll type in. But if this is the first time you're launching the server, please refer to our knowledge base article on getting started with JupyterLab in ArenaView. This will explain how to create the token needed to define your password and other initial setup steps. The link will be in the description posted below. Once JupyterLab is launched, you will see the Launcher tab window on the right and a file and folder explorer on your left, showing all the pre-installed example notebook files. These are simple camera configuration notebooks to help you get started with controlling the camera. On the Explorer window, we can also see the files that we copied over, which we downloaded from the Lucid website. Here is the object detection folder with the notebook, and we'll go into that folder, double click on the notebook file, and open it. This object detection notebook acquires a video stream using Arena SDK, uses OpenCV to convert a frame into an NP array, and then uses a trained TensorFlow model to identify objects in the image. It'll display a bounding box around the object along with a detection score, classes, and number of detections. This example is compatible with Lucid's Phoenix, Triton, Atlas, and Atlas 10 cameras, both mono and color camera models. Now, notebooks contain both documentation, codes, and output. These first sections are just documentation, but as we see with the dependencies, we need to install these additional libraries, and we can do that by running the code block below the list of dependencies. Let's do that now by clicking on the code block and then click the run button on top or by pressing the shift plus enter keys. Once you execute this code block, a star or asterisk will appear between the brackets and it will download and install the dependency libraries automatically. Note that once this is done installing, we can actually comment this code block out so it doesn't have to download and install them every time we run this notebook. As mentioned, the notebooks also contain output. And here we can see the output of the dependencies installation. If there are sub-dependencies that are required, it will also download and install those at automatically. So this code block is now done, and you'll see that the asterisk is now a number between the brackets. We can use this notebook with a sample image or with a live streaming camera. In our example, this is the sample image if you want to test it without a camera. In this case, you just need to set the use camera image to true or false. But because we have a Triton camera connected, we have it set to true. So we will run each code block. Here we will import the various libraries and create an object for them. Here we load the model. Then we define a display window. Default is 800 by 600. So this is just the display window size, but we are using the full resolution of the camera for object detection. So feel free to adjust the display size to any resolution you want. This code block will detect the camera. If there are multiple cameras, it will list them for you to pick which one you want to use. This one sets up and runs the camera. Here's the detection function. As documented here, it displays the box boundaries and score around the object, the detection classes, and number of detections. This is the acquisition. This is for if we use a sample image, and this is the main loop. 
So after it's all executed, it will list all the cameras, which in this case is only one Triton camera. If there are other cameras, it would be listed here. The single Triton camera is shown as device zero, so we'll type in zero into the field and press enter. The device is being created and a separate view window will launch. The 800 by 600 view window we defined earlier. And now we have the output from our camera showing various objects that are being detected and identified. That's it. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching and stay lucid.